boom. That's powerful. Oh, oh I've got him covered in goosebumps. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Remind podcast. My name's David Masterson and I'm joined with Dr. Ashley Morland. And today's episode, Ash, we're going to be talking about some of the, I don't know, the fears around personal growth, mm. around personal development. Like anyone would think that's a weird topic because it's usually rainbows, sunshine, skittles and unicorns when it comes to personal development. It's all upside, but... Today's episode, we're going to talk about some of the things that you might leave behind. Mm, the dark side of personal development in some the ways. Dark side. Yes, absolutely. So let's dive right into that. Did you want to start? 100%. So um, what we're really wanting, look, wanting to look at today is the, what's the price of personal growth? So obviously, it sounds like a really good thing. If we are growing, we're learning, we're becoming better people and all these kinds of things. But what is something that I observe a lot and I experienced in my own life was that I had people around me. I had the relationships that I had, the friendships that I had. I had certain relational dynamics with my family. That's how I did life. But as I grew it actually required the relational dynamics to change because I had changed. And the thing that becomes really scary is that when you think about these things from a vibrational perspective, right, a vibrational frequency perspective, the toxicity and dysfunction that previously existed in my relationships was a very low vibrational frequency. It was one of fear. It was one of jealousy. It was one of um, trauma bonding and a lot of mm. sadness and a lot of anger. And so, for instance, if I had had a fight with my ex-husband, that's when all of my best friends would come and band around me. We would drink alcohol. We would whinge. We would really, I would feel so connected and so supported and so validated Mm, significant but, as well because they were yeah, around. Yep. I felt really important. They met all my needs and I had absolute certainty because they would always show up. But hopefully, if you're listening to this, you can see how toxic and dysfunctional that is. And so, mm. as I started to grow and I started to heal those lower vibrational frequency emotions and started to rise into a higher vibrational frequency state of acceptance and peace and love and joy it meant that the vibrational frequency of the relationships that I had was no longer a match for where I was now when that happens there's only three options there's only three alternatives of how that can go either the people or the relationships rise to match they fall away or I fall back down to match them. Mm, okay. So definitely like what you're talking about, <clears throat> I suppose in this example where you're with your ex-husband, things were happening, something blows up, you call your girlfriends over and it's, you know, they, they rally and support around you. So we're talking about those relationships, not necessarily your husband or your ex-husband at that time that you're sort of re referring Absolutely. to. Well, any relationship, because as and I grew, my relationship with my ex-husband could not, it, it had a choice as well. Either it could grow mm. as well through healing and relational change towards positive relationships, or the other alternative is it fell away. And in that case, it fell away. And I guess, <clears throat> and actually let's go back to last week's episode when we talked about sort of regulation and showing up and, you know, dysregulation, that certainty is one thing that does seem to trigger the nervous system when we spoke mm -hmm. about it in that episode. 
And so when you start to develop or go down the self-development path, and this is one thing I'm going to talk from in experience, you do even wonder, if I do this, how are other people going to react? Like I've got certain patterns and certain people that I do things with that have been, you know, really good, as in they've shown up for me, they're good people and they do these things. But then as I start to change my view on different things about what I feel is who's responsible for my happiness. Well, in the, in the past, it was circumstances, idiots, and all of those things. If I could just manage all of that, then everything's fine. So guess what? When I'm talking to my good friends, at the time, it's all about how that person's an idiot and we need to get rid of that. And then, you know, the prime minister this and, you know, different countries that and military, you know, we're, we're all absolutely just amazing at running everything that we're not running. But then suddenly you start to look inward and go, well, actually, I'm only responsible for myself. My happiness is only for myself. And really, I'm just accountable for how I show up. Mm. Well, suddenly 90% of those conversations go away. Oh, that dickhead. He wouldn't know how to run it. Mm -hmm. So something what you're talking about becomes awkward. Redundant. Yep. And then suddenly where you're going to talk to that person is it at a pub? Is it a coffee shop? Is it a whatever? Okay. Am I going to spend more time drinking and less talking or do I want to go there at all? Okay. Well, if I'm going there because I need to soothe my nervous system and alcohol does a great job of soothing to a point, then, oh, okay. Is that, was I only doing that to meet that person, to talk about those things to, oh, crap. Now I'm working back a bit. Now suddenly I'm drinking chai lattes. No hate because I do have in the past drunk chai lattes <laughs> as opposed to having a beer. And by the way, for those listening, it's a decaf latte with almond milk in a dirty glass if you need to be masculine enough. <laughs> um, and so now that person that used to be a cornerstone of, let's say, your regulation or talking with or just being general friendship with suddenly they look at you and go who are you Mm -hmm. and suddenly all you're doing is going well actually I I now see a different point of view when it comes to how we've been bonding which is this sort of discussion and so then suddenly you start to think am I making them wrong am I being a little bit uh, am I should I be doing any of this and so it's, it's a big fear even before you start or even as, as you're going along because, again, you don't have the certainty of knowing if I follow this, everything's going to be just okay because then the, the change is easy. So it's a massive one when you think of it in that context. Yeah, 100%. And it is so big. And to give you an example, I think um, – so I live in Melbourne – where we had the biggest lockdowns in the world, the longest lockdowns in the world during COVID. And I found myself completely dysregulated, completely in the depths of overwhelm. Um, I was, I'd fallen into the quicksand of watching the the daily updates and press Mm. conferences and looking at the numbers every day and, you know, obsessing over it. And all of the friendship groups that I had at the time were all obsessing and and building on each other's and validating each other's fears and worries and concerns and all that sort of stuff. And then eventually I made a conscious choice. I don't like how I feel. Mm. And so do I have control over what's happening out there? No, I don't. I can't make COVID stop. I can't make the death stop. I can't make anything else stop. Does it suck? Absolutely. Is it tragic? Absolutely. But I can control what happens inside my home. Mm. I can control what channel the TV's on. I can control what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, and that can give me some power over my peace. And so over a period of time, I stopped watching the news updates. I stopped reading the news. I stopped listening to the fear-mongering and everything else 
And I just got on with my life. I created moments with my children where we could laugh, we could connect, we could watch movies together. Um, And so as my vibrational frequency rose and I wasn't feeling the weight of the heaviness of the fear and the, the pain and all those kinds of things, the people that I was connecting with about like at the level of fear were still deep in their fear. And Mm. so when I started to rise out of it and I would want to go and catch up with my friends who were still deep in the level of fear, I would sit on the outside and go, I don't want to be a part of this conversation. And I, I actually don't know what to talk to you about if we're not talking about this. I don't know how to connect with you if this isn't what we're connecting over. And and, and and to be fair, that's what you've been doing with these people all along. They haven't changed. No, they haven't changed. And, no. and when it comes, you know, when it comes to pure intention, they're, they're still showing up. They're still, you know, being a good person within their own right. It's just that what they're focusing on is different to you. And, you know, yes. I think I, I've used the word in the past, unnecessary. Like even when I was going through these, you know, through parts of my growth, I even found movies I couldn't relate to anymore. Mm-hmm. And I love a good action movie. And I went and saw Maverick, you know, the, the, the latest Top Gun movie, and just watched the whole storyline. It was interesting. I couldn't get involved in it because I'm watching this whole thing going, this is so completely unnecessary. Mm-hmm. But it's not that it wasn't a great movie. The cinematography was great. The acting was great. The um, the way it was put together, brilliant. Um, great to see Tom Cruise, you know, back in a jet. But it just, I wasn't, I wasn't there anymore. But it wasn't yeah. because these people weren't putting effort into it, and other people still enjoy it. Because a lot of these things, when and maybe I'm being a bit sensitive about it, but as we talk about, as we raise our vibration, as we heal, some people might listen to this and go, how is it up in your ivory tower? And we're not saying that. What we're sort of saying is intrinsically people are good and they want to do the right things. What we're just talking about is a different level of an awareness and then how we how people are connecting and what they're connecting on. Yeah. And and you're right, intrinsically people are good, but all humans are wired for connection. Mm-hmm. And so if we are wired for connection, we will connect in whatever means presents itself. And so if our commonality is that we have, like, for instance, I, I think I've shared on the show previously, I had a brain tumour when I was 18. And the commonality that I had with other people who were going through the same thing gave us a level of connection that people Mm. that I didn't have with people who weren't going through that. And so it's, I kind of see it as this misery loves company kind of situation. And when misery loves company, that meant that in that time, I went on to all the support groups. I was in every group on Facebook and social media and all that kind of stuff, uh, all the forums and everything you can imagine looking for people who were sharing a similar path to what I was experiencing because I didn't feel alone. It gave me certainty. It gave me connection. Mm. However, what I found is that over time, the validation I got from my suffering because we connected on a level of suffering, the validation that I got meant that I didn't want to break free of the suffering because it meant I lost that connection. Mm. And and when you say misery loves company, when it maybe there's part of it, but it, the, what I was thinking as you were saying that was more along the. But weren't you just looking for people that understood what you're going through? Yeah. Because as someone who has never had cancer and touch wood, hope to never have it. I can sit there and empathise, but I've got no idea mm-hmm. what it's like to go through the whole process. And I imagine, you know, it's not just all summed up in the someone tells you you've got cancer. No, there's weeks leading up to it, like something's wrong, something's changing, something's going on. We need to test for it. You know, they, there's the first thing. And so you're probably looking for, you weren't probably looking for people to be miserable with. You're probably looking for people who's gone through it. It's like, hey, when they look at you, they see you, they see everything you've gone through and the level of appreciation 
that they can afford you and what you can receive mm-hmm. is he probably a lot heard and understood. A lot more than someone saying, that's terrible. I've got no idea. A hundred percent, right? And so you're spot on. It starts as that. It starts for searching to be seen, heard and understood. And when we are seen, heard and understood, that's very validating, but it's also very addictive. And so because oxytocin can produce, um, it can be a precursor to dopamine. And so when I say that, Uh, misery loves company it's from the perspective that it is addictive to connect with people based off drama first of all so it might be like gossiping um oh oh my gosh i i can't even think of other examples that's that's (laughs) okay but yeah back back to my own experience was hmm. that for a period of time it's like the option to break free of my own suffering and self-pity and feeling sorry for myself and all those kinds of things was actually hindered because if I didn't have that self-pity, I couldn't connect with these other people anymore. And so it's like our suffering serves a purpose. And I've had, like, I am very, very upfront and I actually have a question in my screening for new clients, how is your problem serving you? And the reason I ask that is because if our problem, say, for instance, if I um, every single afternoon when I finish work, I go to the pub and I'm drinking alcohol every day or even if it's just every every Thursday night or every Sunday and I'm drinking alcohol with the same group of people and we get together and we drink and we just drink and drink and drink round after round and we talk rubbish and have a laugh but then we decide this alcohol is actually not serving my health in in the highest way. I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. I realize I'm addicted to alcohol, so I'm going to break free mm. of that. Well, it's not as simple as just breaking free from the alcohol because the alcohol is a key ingredient in my connection with others. And mm. so if I give up the alcohol, the risk is then these people will want to go and drink without me because I don't fit in with that anymore. I'm not seen. I'm not understood. I'm different now. I'm an outcast. Mm. And so um, smoking is a classic example because smoking is often done socially. You go outside Mm. and and it's a real social thing. So it's it's really fascinating to me that a lot of the time, even though we know what we've got to do to elevate, if our problem is serving a purpose for us, we won't let go of the problem. And so, for instance, um, in a relationship, I might just jump in there just very quickly because yeah. I'd have thought about that. When you're talking about, let's just go back to your own example, when you are genuinely going through quite an experience that is fairly unique and you're looking for people as a way to find people that can relate, get some, you know, learn something from people who have been in existing or going through at the same time, sharing of information. All of this, I can see you're coming into it with the right intention. Yes. It's the intention of connection. Yeah. And it's sort of like. And to be um, understood. A- absolutely. absolutely. And they're all absolutely, totally. Absolutely. And yeah. none, of, none of this point we're talking about misery loves company. No. What, I, what I'm seeing is now what we do is we go into something with these pure intentions. And the same with relationships. You go into these things with pure intentions. I serve a purpose for this person. They serve a purpose for for me at that mm-hmm. point in time. But what you're sort of saying is at some point in your journey, when it came to connecting with these people, it started off as support, but then almost turned into a crutch. It's an addiction. So at that point, yeah. when you don't let go of it, then you're no longer holding on to it for what that initial intention was, was for support connection to be seen and understood it then turned into this has now become a part of what i what i am and what i do and who i and, am and okay absolutely mm. so then you talk about okay um in my kitchen i have three bottles of wine doesn't matter that's great now in my kitchen, I have three empty bottles of wine from last night and another three bottles of wine from the night before, another three bottles of wine the night before. Now we have a problem. 
Yeah. So it in itself, when you sort of start, I guess it's when you start these things, when do you learn to let go? Mm. Because as you check, when, when these, when these relationships form together, for the most part, it's with the right intention. Yeah, absolutely. And as things change and move and flex, when you don't let go, that's when we've got these issues. And I guess that's what we're talking about. The things that are going to change and flex our relationship is growth. Yeah. Because people grow no matter what. They grow in this direction or that direction. You choose your good or bad, whatever it is. But unless you're following together, you need to learn when to let go. And that fear of letting go when it becomes a part of you is a daunting part. Yeah, so that's what I guess that's what I wanted to um, just sort of clarify around that point. Yeah. And, you know, I can apply this to every scenario. I'll give two because you'll see how the crossover, how this, this um, concept applies everywhere in our lives. So the first example is in our intimate relationships, where if our relationship has been built off, I never express my needs and I don't set boundaries. And that's the dynamic of our relationship. And all of a sudden, as I begin my own personal growth, and, and why would I not do that? Fear, shame, hurt. If I started to heal and started to step into the fullness of who I was, where my voice mattered, where it was safe for me to have needs, where I actually started to uphold some boundaries. The relationship is drastically changing. That's going to be very dysregulating for the partner. And so because what are their you've, already, you've always been that way. Yeah, the because old, I'm always, way. it's, it's and how now they you, know. And now that's you've how we've, That's how <laughs> we've danced. That's, that's yeah. the steps of our dance. So then what happens is, I can uphold my boundaries and uphold my new expectations. I can continue using my voice. Now, my partner has options. The options are they can either rise to grow with me and learn how to get in step in dance again, learn mm -hmm. how to navigate this new relational dynamic. So they have to go through their own growth as well. Or they can dig their heels in and go, I liked it better when you never spoke up, when you just met all my needs and you had no boundaries and I could do whatever you want. And if you're not willing to be like that, then I'm out. And then they'll disappear. Mm -hmm. So that's the example of them falling away. Now I'll give you the same scenario. It's the same dynamic at play, except I'll give it to you in a professional setting. So I have worked with a business in the past where they had terrible boundaries. People were showing up for work late, using their phones while they were on their shift, not showing up without even notifying anyone. There were just lack of boundaries and poor culture, right? Mm -hmm. But that was the dynamic. That was the standard that existed within the business. And that's how it was for a long time. Mm. They've then gone, we want to improve our culture and we want to actually start implementing some standards and expectations that are aligned to our values. We want to start living our values. Now, some of their staff actually went, we're willing to step into that. We're, even though we're currently existing here, we are willing to step into growth and start um, contributing to the team in a way that meets within those boundaries and expectations because we want to contribute to the culture of, of the organisation. Mm. But other people get their panties in a knot and go, well, this isn't how I like it. I'm going to leave. Yeah, you because can't control me. Yeah, I don't yeah like you can't control me. It hasn't been a problem for the last 10 years. I'm not going to start showing up on time now. Mm. They don't show up on time, so I'm not going to show up on time. And so what happens? That individual has shown that they're not able, they don't have the capacity mm. or the desire to rise to match, and so they fall away. Mm. And so sometimes, um, and I see this a lot when I'm working with businesses, Sometimes when the vibrational frequency of the business rises, even though it's to a healthier level where there are actually solid foundations of boundaries and they're living their values instead of the, them just being like, you know. Just plastered on the wall. Yeah. Plastered on the wall as a decoration. They actually mm -hmm. start implementing them and upholding them. All of a sudden, 
there's a big clearing of the decks where the people who are not aligned to that frequency and who don't, for whatever reason, don't want to or can't feel that they don't have the personal resources to step into alignment with that, disappear. There'll be Mm. bulk people quitting. There'll be bulk everything. But the beautiful thing that comes after that is if you uphold that standard, guess who these people have created, the, the people who are at the low lower vibrational frequency, when they offboard, guess who they've created space for? The next people to step in will be mm. at that level. And so or, it's or, like in our yeah, friendship. Or even, yeah, or even people that see that might be uncomfortable with it for a little while, but then get given time to come up as well. Yes. Yeah. And it's not a fair expectation to say, this is my standard. You have to be there today. Mm. Maybe they need some development. Maybe they need some professional development. Maybe they need some some culture or building and some, time. some resourcing yeah. to support them in that growth. But if there's a willingness to grow and a desire to grow, then that's a really good space to be. Now, the same with our friendships, right? I have had people fall away from my life who at the time when they were a vibrational match for me at an energetic level with the emotions we would connect on and and all that kind of thing, Mm. even the habits in our lives. As I grew and my vibrational frequency rose, these people fell away, but I didn't grieve it like it was a heartbreaking loss. Hmm. It was very, very different. If we were a vibrational match and that person was taken away, I would be deeply grieved. It would it would really hurt me and really upset me. And you mentioned music before. I think um, imagine we're going through a real rage stage of life. And so we're attracted to rage, angry music. Mm. And that's our favorite genre of music because we feel connected to it. Now, if we were still experiencing lots and lots of rage, but all of a sudden someone said, nah, you can't ever listen to that music. you got to listen to this, I don't know, smooth, high frequency music. No, it's just the smooth jazz from now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would feel really hard. We would feel grieved by that. But what happens is as our frequency rises and we're no longer in the energetic frequency of rage, we listen to the music and feel disconnected to it now. We listen to it and go, I just don't, it doesn't resonate for me. We literally use the word resonate. It doesn't yep. resonate for me. Resonate is a is a frequency term. Yep. And so if it doesn't resonate for me, if you're sitting there observing conversations that you used to be eyeball deep in and go, oh, yeah, this is the best, and you're sitting there as an observer going, this just doesn't resonate for me anymore, I'm, I'm just not feeling it, mm. it means that there's a mismatch. And I guess I guess here as as well, and I don't know why I'm very focused on this, but I'm overlaying this with judgment. Yeah. Right? I'm overlaying this with when we sort of say this doesn't resonate on it anymore, are we sort of thinking to ourselves, are we now better than them? And I'm not saying we are. Or no. people people listening sort of going, I can't do that because now I'm judging them to be less than me. Or even if you're no. thinking that, this is not about sort of saying people are good or bad. This and is it's not, not about, a hierarchy. Exactly. It's no. a, sort of like if you, you know, like naturally when you sort of start singing, right, there's a certain pitch that you'll always hit, right? And I can remember when way back when I started, it was like an E. I'm not <laughs> saying I can sing very well at the moment, but it was like a, it's like an E, right? And then suddenly the, the the music coach was trying to get me to middle C. Now, what's the difference between C and E? Well, C is no better than E, is no better than A, is no better than F. And even there's flats and sharps that you need to put in to make beautiful music. So when we're talking about the change in frequency, yes, we're talking about going from a lower bass frequency up into a higher more sort of light frequency, a bit like a piano, while there are certain chords and there's certain things or certain sort of tunes, we're not sort of saying that any frequency is better than the other. What we are saying 
is that if you are on a path of ascension or if you're sort of raising up, then sometimes like I've mashed my hand on a piano and made some awful music <laughs> by hitting things that you shouldn't be hitting at the same time. And so for me, it's just really important to sort of say, don't apply this sort of judgment. When you're walking your own path, you'll feel that things that are attracting to you and things are now starting to resist you. Some yeah. resistance you need to work through, but some resistance is you need to let go of it because it's almost yeah. like two pieces of sandpaper rubbing against each other. And so allow these things to, to carry on. Yeah. And even talking about music, right, I saw this quote just yesterday. It reminded me of it that um, and it was from Tupac Shakur. <laughs> and, yes, I am showing my age. But and th he didn't say it in this context, but I still think it actually is quite relevant. So just because you are no longer my friend doesn't automatically make you my enemy. Yes. I want exactly. you to eat, but you just don't need to eat at my table anymore. Yeah. And so we get trapped into this thing of you're either friend or foe. Boom. Yeah, duality, so, right? Exactly. And that yeah. we, we always work in this polarity, which is which is fine because this dimension is rife with it. But when someone is a friend, it's a known person, so now you're a friend. If you're not my friend, what are you? Yeah. You're now my enemy because I have to put you in a box yeah. as opposed to the billions of other people that are just existing. Yeah, so, 100%. So I, I think the point that you've made there is so vitally important because the difference is in a in the human world, we have duality. If there's hot, there's cold. Mm -hmm. But temperature isn't categorical. Temperature is not hot versus cold. Temperature is a spectrum of degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with frequency. So we're not saying that, uh, like you said, friend or foe, I'm going to come back to another point on that, but frequency is a spectrum. And what we feel attracted to, what we feel a resonance towards as opposed to resistance, what we feel a resonance towards is the thing that is the vibrational match for us. Mm. It's like, you know, when um, you feel you can put the water on at the tap and if you play around with the hot and the cold just right until the temperature of the water that comes out of the tap matches the temperature of your skin, you don't notice the difference in the temperature. It's not hot or cold. It's just the perfect yeah. resonant temperature for your skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if the water is too hot, then you're going to feel resistant. You'll feel it. Right? You'll feel it. If the water is too cold, you'll feel it. And so mm. all this is saying is that, it's not bad that the water is hotter than your skin temperature and it's not bad that the water is colder than your skin temperature. It just is. It's met, It's meeting you where you're at. And so when it comes to this resonance versus resistance thing, if you're sitting there observing a conversation going, this isn't resonating for me anymore, it's not good or bad. It just means that the thing that will resonate with you is at a higher frequency. It's not going to mm. be the drama. It's not going to be the dysfunction anymore. And that's a beautiful place to get to. And the other thing I was going to touch on has now escaped me for one moment. It might come back to me. If it does, I'll tell you. We can, we can <laughs> circle it back. But I guess when we bring this into context as to when you look at the title of this video, it's what we fear of losing. Yes. And um, everybody sort of has an idea of if you to walk up to anyone and say, is self-development good or bad for you? Most people come at it with a positive aspect. Yes, it's good mm -hmm. because you're going to improve who you are. You're going to go to the gym more. You're going to speak to people more. You're going to do whatever it is that you need to do that you feel as though in some points you could be improving on. But the fear of the loss, of mm. the change, of the certainty is a big one. Yeah. And I most mean, of that... What if you ask the same question of is personal growth good or bad if it meant your best friend wouldn't be in your life anymore? Oof. Changes the yeah. question, doesn't it? It does. Absolutely. Because then suddenly you're sort of looking at, well, am, am I on the right path? You start to question, mm -hmm. is this actually, am I just being a bit over the top here? 
or um, yeah, there's there's so much that they because that that best friend would know you very well. Yes, there's a lot and, of certainty and a lot of history and a lot of significance there. And I guess also for for myself, there's that thing as well. Maybe I could do the self growth and not tell anyone. <laughs> Best of both worlds, right? Mm -hmm. I can I can do it, and then then I can pretend, because then I don't have to worry about it, right? Yeah. But it never it never and I I did um, that with certain people in my life because I wasn't confident they would embrace the changes that came with the self-development because there had to yeah. be a change for me in thinking. It had to be a change at a fundamental level of what I felt was right and wrong yeah. or, the, or the fact of there is no right and wrong. Like yep. what? Um, and then the, conver the way I'd react in conversations is no longer natural. It's programmed. Oh, I have yeah. to. Oh, that's right. What would I used to say about that? But 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 but. Yeah. So there's no way around it, unless you only see them every now and again. But having conversations with these people and then being vulnerable to sort of say, "Hey, these are things that I'd really like to talk to you about, but I'm not sure." how you're going to respond because this is actually really quite important to me. Yes, it might feel that I've changed. Those conversations are worthwhile. Yeah. Absolutely. Because there are people that while they might not necessarily agree 100%, they're also very relevant in, in your life. And for, for, for me, having those people in my life as I'm navigating these new things and having questions about it, when – your friends can come at it with no judgment and accept you for who you are, even though they might not be on what people will say, quote, unquote, spiritual or ascension pass or awakening. They're still good people with genuine feelings. They want the best for you. They don't, you know, they have principles and morals. Like it's not like this whole parallel of you're only good if you're spiritual or ascending. It's not the case. And so, well, so, can, so I'll jump in there and say, biblically, it says everyone, like we are made in the likeness of God hmm. and it says God is love. And so at the core, the core essence of everyone, regardless of your vibrational frequency in this moment, your core essence is one of love, which is the highest frequency in existence. That's right. And we're, and we're all there. If you're on planet Earth, you're all there. We're just talking about the top part of the spectrum here. Mm -hmm. Because some people sort of say, well, if you're if you're down there, you're either dumb or evil. No. And if you're ascending, you're amazing and on a pedestal. You know, yeah. And no, yeah. we're all we're all here. We're just hang on, let me get the ca camera right. We're all up here. We're just talking about the differences between these these parts. Yeah. So and it's, um so closing the gap is increasing the frequency. And I think there's this concept of bringing heaven to earth. Mm -hmm. And I love it because to bring heaven to earth requires us to rise our vibrational frequency. How do we do that? We need to rid ourselves of anger, malice, jealousy, greed, hurt, all the things, right? And I'm going to pose it to you like this. If our options, oh, actually, no, I'll, I will come back to that and say, if that's how we bring heaven to earth, one of the, mm -hmm. the biggest things, so uh, when my husband and I have conversations with friends of ours who are non-Christians, they struggle to comprehend all the rules. Like they see it, they look at it very legalistically mm. that there are rules. I'll give you a really simple example of sex before marriage. Yep. And yep. when they, they look at that and, I, and they think, oh, but I go out and pick up a different person every weekend and I have one night stands and that doesn't make me bad and all those kinds of things. Why would I be a Christian when I would then ha not get to do that fun thing? Hmm. But again, when you look at vibrational frequency, as we navigated our own healing journey there, this was one of the biggest things for me to wrap my head around because I, I couldn't, I hadn't embodied it and I couldn't understand it. But it's not that you don't, do it so that you can abide by the rules and follow the rules. And if you break the rules, there's shame or guilt or punishment, condemnation. Mm. From my perspective, 
as your vibrational frequency rises closer to the frequency of love, peace, joy, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control, they are the fruits of the spirit, the desires of your heart change. One Mm -hmm. night stands is no longer a vibrational match for me at this vibrational frequency. And so that desire for one night stands falls away. The desire for extramarital affairs falls away. And so this vibrational frequency, it's such a hard um, thing to understand until you actually experience it where that desire is no longer there. It's not like you're depriving yourself. Mm. It's just the desire for that is gone because it's not a vibrational match. But the thing I was going to say is the title of this is Fear of Losing Others to Find Ourselves. And imagine that the fear of losing others in order to be true to ourselves is so much greater than what we've been doing up until now, where we have very gladly given up ourself in order to keep others. Because we haven't been taught, we haven't been modelled. Like this this generation now in this last sort of, you know, we talk about a little bit more mainstream now, the ideas of the words resonance, ascension, awakening, um, high vibration, low vibration is becoming a lot more mainstream. Yes, it's been around for a very long time. And, you know, as yourself being sort of Christian, it's a lot of it's the teachings uh, in the Bible. And then you've got the 70s was a big sort of, you know, love man, wow. But then was sort of tainted with the, the drug use. But in between all of that, we haven't been modeled. We haven't been shown. And so how do we find out that we're not a, a, a vibrational match to sleeping around? Well, you got to sleep around first. Not in every case, but to sort of say sleeping around is bad so that we can do that. Well, actually, in some people's journey, it is. You have to experience one to know the other. That was and my experience. I, oh, yeah. I couldn't have possibly because that was the journey that I navigated. And so the people who are ne- who knew me at this vibrational level, who now I am at this vibrational level and they knew me when I was here, can't comprehend. But when you were here, you used to do these things and now you're there and you have no desire to do them. You've mm. changed. We can't relate yeah, with right. that version of you anymore because we remember you as that. Mm. And so for them, they can't comprehend it. But then when they go on their own journey and they, as you say, ascend, um, increase the vibrational frequency, releasing the guilt, releasing shame, mm. renewing their mind back to truth instead of the lies and deceptions, do not conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's when that resonance starts to kick in. Absolutely. Really cool. And I guess that the whole, if we had to sort of sum up this whole episode, it's around the fact that change is inevitable. Mm-hmm. It's, you, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to be if you are changing and you're wanting or you have this desire to change in a certain direction, left or right, up or down, whichever way it is, that's probably because that's from inside yourself. Unless it's coming from someone telling you, telling you, telling you, obviously that's that's a different story. But let's just say it comes from inside yourself because suddenly you're looking at the status quo and going, oh, I don't feel the same way. I'm putting up with this. I'm not getting the enjoyment or I'm using way too many substances. You, there's something internally telling you to, to move forward. With the people, like you're not going to lose pets through this. Your pets aren't going to, whether you do this or don't do this, as long as you're not abusing the animal, they won't see a difference. So we're just talking mm-hmm. about interpersonal yep. relationships. Be, your house is still going to be there. Your car is yep. still going to be there, regardless of your frequency. All, all of that. So when you get to a point of, okay, now I want to change and the fear kicks in, well, hang on, how does my social circle look like? It's a genuine fear. But also be open to the fact that you could be someone who might sort of show others of what's possible. Or if you sort of start and be open about it, you might be surprised how many people are doing it in the dark Mm. because they're doing the same thing. Or you might be surprised that 
you might find someone who's at a similar position and you start to grow together. Or yeah. for those who don't necessarily resonate with it completely, but they still have love and they still want to be in your life, they will bring understanding to bridge the 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 difference just as you would because you're not judgmental of what each other are, are doing. Yeah. And so don't be afraid to do it. And when inevitably people do come in and out of your life, even before you start spiritual growth or self-development, I guarantee everybody listening here has probably got one person in their life that they don't talk to anymore through no fault of anything else. It's just sort of something's come in and they've gone out. Just mm -hmm. know it happens anyway. It's just now you're sort of presenting, well, since I'm changing, then the reason they've left is because of my change. Yes, that might be part yeah. of it. It might happen anyway. Don't be afraid yeah. because and you're making room for others as well. A hundred percent. And this is so when I'm having an initial consultation with someone and they tell me they're in a relationship, one of the conversations that I have is in an like, I'll ask about the dynamics of the relationship and all those kinds of things. And quite often there's dysfunction. And so in an ideal world, the two people in relationship will jump into this healing journey together. They will move through it together. They will each take responsibility for their own trauma, their own wounding, their own insecurities, and they will heal those independently but together. Mm on the same journey at the same time. Now, the reason I say that is because it means that they're both increasing their vibrational frequency in unison. Now, that's very rarely the case. It's very rare that um, couples come at the same time as a starting point. What's more likely to happen is that one person in, in the relationship is ready to start their journey, so they ascend. And then over a period of time, the other person, either through fear of losing them or through a desire for their own change because they can see the benefits in that person will then jump in and start their journey. And the conversation that I have is you need to understand that the risk of this is that as you grow, they won't, which mm. means that you are now in a relationship with someone who is still, they are more committed to the familiarity of dysfunction than they are to growing in a healthy relationship with you. Or even if they were a match, frequency-wise before, they're no longer a match. Yeah, because and, there's, and, now this, and, there's now yeah. this mismatch. And so are you prepared for the possibility that they will fall away? Because well, there, are only, there are only two options. Either we oh, they, lose. They, they do or they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we are, if our relationship is operating at a low frequency, we either personally rise and grow, in which case we risk losing them, hmm. or we prioritize keeping them, in which case we lose ourselves. Which is also very difficult because you're going to be at war with yourself. No matter how much you try and distract yourself, it never goes away. Once once there's that desire, which is your own desire, it, it just it just never stops. Yeah. And that, that'd irony, be interesting. I was just going to say the irony of it is through the fear of someone else abandoning you, you will have a drive to abandon yourself just so they don't. Which there's there's going to be abandonment either in any direction. I think you said in the past, choose your bad. But yes, yeah. it's um it's a definitely a fear thing. And if those people are going through relationships, um, and that's why you sort of come across this and it kind of resonates. Check out, I think it's like two weeks ago we did an episode on broken homes when there's kids involved. Um, there's some of our thoughts to fly around there. But Ash, I've really enjoyed this one. Um, I think fear in losing others around this, it's a its a big one, but it, it certainly shouldn't be enough to stop you. Um, and keep on going, guys. I think that's probably the, the biggest points. But let us know in the comments. Do you like it? Not like it? Do you have any ideas? on some other topics because Ash and I come up with topics all the time, but we'd like to know what you guys are interested in. So if you're watching YouTube, hit the comments, podcast, you know what to do. 
And um, I think we'll wrap it up for this week. Anything else you want to add, Ash, before we wrap up? That's it. For once, I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye.